So, let us now continue our study of silo theorems. So, with whatever background I gave in the last uh, video, let me now start uh, go ahead and start with this first silo theorem. So, there are three silo theorems, first silo theorem is the following. Okay, so, let uh, G be a finite group. Let G be a finite group. Let P be a prime number. Let P be a prime number such that let P be a prime number such that P divides the order of G. Okay. So, we write the order of G, let us call it small n as P e times m where because I am now assuming that uh, p divides the order of g e is positive and p does not divide m. Okay. So, remember that this means that we have taken out the largest power of p that is available in the order of g. So, then this is a setup as in the end of the last video I set it up like this. Then so, actually this, this data is not relevant uh, for the statement. So, the statement is let G be a finite group, let P be a prime number it, that divides the order of the group. Then G has a silo P subgroup, right. So, then G has a silo P subgroup. So, this is a very strong theorem in the uh, you, you, you should recall first of all C uh, recall Cauchy's theorem. So, if you recall one of the theorems that I did in uh, previous weeks was Cauchy's theorem. So, there I assumed if G is an abelian group finite always as always and a prime p divides order of g, then g has an element of order p. So, this was the Cauchy's theorem. So, first silo theorem is a vast generalization of this thing, because first of all I am not assuming that it is an abelian group. And in fact, we are saying much more than that it has an element of order p, because we are saying that it in fact has a subgroup of order p power e. As a corollary after proving this, I will prove that uh, first silo theorem will definitely imply that uh, any group of order, uh, any group which whose order is divisible by p has an element of order p. So, first silo theorem. is a it is not I mean is a vast generalization. So, I mean it generalizes Cauchy's theorem to arbitrary finite groups and makes a stronger statement than saying that there is an element of order p. So, my goal today is to prove that G has a silo p subgroup. Remember a silo, silo p subgroup is a subgroup of order p power e. So, the proof of silo theorem. So, the rest of the video will be focused on the proof of silo theorem. And as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, this proof as well as the proofs of next two silo theorems depend critically on action of G on itself and its subsets. The two actions we consider are left multiplication and conjugation. So, now I am going to consider the following set. So, earlier I talked about G acting on the power set of G, G acting on the set of all sets of subsets of G. Now, I am not interested in all subsets, I am interested in only subsets of cardinality p power e. So, let capital S be the set of subsets of G of order p power e. So, remember background 
always we assume that n can be written as n is the order of uh, group and that is written as p e power m p power e times m and p does not divide this is our setup. So, let lo let us look at the subsets of order p power e. So, in other words s is all sets a and I again stress these are subsets only not subgroups the cardinality of a is p power e. g acts on s by left multiplication. Right. So, remember in the previous video I said g acts on subsets of uh, g by left multiplication. There I defined g dot a to be g times small a as small a varies over capital A. Now, I am introducing a further restriction here. I am not looking at all subsets, but I am looking at subsets of order p power e and all you need to verify here to verify that g acts on s is that it is an easy exercise actually to verify this if a has p power e elements then g a also has p power e elements. So, in fact, I should state this exercise better. So, in fact, I, I should state order of a is order of g a. So, if order of a is p power e order of g a is also p power e and this is repeatedly used in all the videos that we have done right. Because this is related to the statement that two cosets of a subgroup have the same number of elements, but here even if the it is a is not a subgroup the statement holds because the set of elements g a will be distinct if a is distinct. So, in other words if a and b are distinct g a and g b are distinct. So, the number of elements of a is equal to number of elements of g a. So, in other words if you take a subset of order p power e apply a group element to it you get another element of order p power e. So, g acts on this set S. So, I am not interested in the power set of A, I am interested in the subsets which have p power E elements. So, now uh, I am going to recall for you a fact what is the order of S. Okay, so, this is a simple combinatorial argument that you may have seen earlier or you can think about it and convince yourself. So, I am not going to prove this because this takes me uh, on a tangent. So, you have n elements right small n many elements in capital G and you want to construct a group of uh, subset of order p power e. So, in our the number of ways of doing this is simply n choose p power e. So, this is n choose p power e that you have studied I am sure in other courses. So, the number of elements of capital S is n choose p power e. In other words number of subsets of group G which have cardinality p power e is precisely n choose p power e. And what is n choose p power e? It is n factorial, so n factorial divided by p power e factorial times n minus p power e factorial right. So, this if you cancel out n minus p power e factorial, what you will have is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 up to n minus p e plus 1 because n minus p e factorial will be cancelled from this and you will have p power e factorial. So, p power e p power e minus 1 p power e minus 2 and 1 the last term will be 1 which is uh, of course, p power e minus p power e plus 1. So, these are the num this is the number of elements of capital S. So, in fact, this is the first fact. The second fact is fact 2 is that P does not divide the cardinality of S. So, this is also not difficult at all, but uh, and I will give you a very quick argument about why this is true. So, remember that order of s is this right order of s is this. So, there are in the numerator and denominator there are same number of elements. So, think of 
order of s as n by p power e n minus 1 by p power e minus 1 n minus 2 by p power e minus 2 n minus p power e plus 1 by p power e minus p power e plus 1 right. So, I am just uh, because there are exactly same number of factors in both numerator and denominator I am going to write it like this. So, if I show that p does not divide each of them then we are done, but uh, here of course, uh, why does p not divide I mean these are not necessarily integers, but I claim that the same factor of p divides n minus i and p power e minus i for any i from 0 to p power e minus 1, because that is the last factor right. So, each factor can be thought of as n minus i, where it is n minus 0 here, n minus 1 here, n minus 2 here, n minus in bracket. So, this can be written as right. So, this can be written as. So, there are p power e minus 1 uh, actually p power e factors here n minus 0, n minus 1, n minus 2. So, the same factor divides. So, if p divides n 3 times, I claim that it also divides p power e 3 times and then same thing happens everywhere. So, there cannot be after you cancel all the things and all the factors and compute cap cardinality of s, there cannot be a p in its order. And this is easy to see because suppose i can be written as p power i. So, let us say p power r times um, I do not know. So, k. So, let us say I write i as. So, here of course, r could be no 0 also. So, then n minus i is p power e m. Remember, n is p power e m minus p power r k. So, you can factor out and remember r must be strictly less than e, because i is strictly less than p power e. So, r is strictly less than e. So, I can factor p power r and what I will have is p power e minus r minus k. So, r is the largest power that divides of p that divides n minus a. Similarly, p power e minus i will be p power e minus p power r times k. Again, we have p power r p power e minus r minus 1. Okay. So, then if you write it like this, then p power r is the largest power of p that divides both n minus i and p power e minus i. So, this forces capital S not to have an uh, order of s not to have any factor of p, because in each of these uh, ratios the same p appears. So, when does cap p divide cap order of s? It divides it when one of these factors has a p remaining right. After you cancel p's in both numerator and denominator it should have some p left, but that does not happen, because if p power 2 divides n minus 1 and p power 3 does not divide it exactly same happens for p power e minus 1. Okay, so, then that is all. So, it, it turns out that there is no factor of p in s. So, we are going to use this. So, the key fact for us to be used later is p does not divide. Okay, so, just uh, uh, if you understand this that is great. But I want you to now take uh, spend a minute thinking about this argument why p does not divide order of s, but please remember that if you do not understand it will not affect the rest of the proof. So, if you do not understand do not get worried about it forget it for the moment accept this as a fact and try to follow the rest of the proof. And if you do not understand why this statement is true 
you can go back and read the proof, uh, listen to the proof again carefully or ask questions. So, in the rest of the proof, I am not going to use any of these calculations. I am only going to use this fact p does not divide order of s. So, let us only use this. So, let us accept this. So, now uh, we are ready to prove Silo's first theorem, Silo first theorem. So, what we have is uh, G acts on on S by left multiplication. And what is S? What is S? S is the set of all subsets of uh, S is all subsets of uh, capital G which have order p power e. So, it acts on S. So, now we have we have the orbit decomposition of S. we have the orbit decomposition of s. What does it say? Order of s is order of orbit, order of the first orbit some I do not know. So, it does not matter. So, this is some k orbits. So, where O 1 through O k are distinct orbits for the action of g on S, right. So, any time we have a finite group G acting on a finite set S, we have the orbit decomposition and hence order of S is the sum of the orders of individual orbits. But now, by the above fact, P which is the fixed prime number we are dealing with, P does not divide order of S. Now, look closely at this equation, order of S is equal to order of O 1 plus order of O 2 plus dot 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 order of O k. P does not divide the left hand side. So, P cannot divide all the terms on the right hand side, right. Because if P divides order of O 1 and order of O 2 and order of O 3 and so on up to order of O k, P will divide everything in the right hand side. So, P will divide the sum also, but then that violates the fact that P does not divide order of S. So, there exists an order orbit. O i such that P does not divide the order of O i, right. This is clear because if P divides all orders, P divides the sum, then P divides order of S, which cannot happen. So, there must and the in, in other words, the statement that P divides all orders is wrong, then that means P does not divide some order. So, P does not divide orbit. O i. So, say remember what is O i? These are orbits of elements of S. So, let us say it is orbit of A. So, A is in S, right. So, P uh, does not divide orbit of A. So, P that is a conclusion for us. P does not divide orbit of A. Now, let H be the stabilizer of S A. And our claim now is H is the desired subgroup. We claim that H is a silo P subgroup of G. Note that being a stabilizer of A or some element of capital S, remember A is an element of capital S. Capital S is a set of subsets. So, an element of capital S is actually a subset of G. So, A is an element of capital S, H is the stabilizer. So, it is definitely a subgroup. The thing to prove here is we know that H is a subgroup of G. We need to show that it is a silo P subgroup. What is the meaning of silo P subgroup? We want to show that its order is equal to P power e. In the last video, I defined silo P subgroups for a group G and for in the in our context, it is exactly subgroup of order P power E. So, in order to claim, prove the claim which is that H is a silo P subgroup, we need to only show that 
order of h is p power e. So, now I am going to use another uh, small lemma that I proved in the previous video. So, what we know is the following by the lemma in the previous video by the lemma in the previous video order of h divides order of a. So, if you go back and look at the previous video this is exactly the lemma that I proved. If g is a group acting on subsets of g and you take a subset and you look at its stabilizer order stabilizer, stabilizer order of the stabilizer divides order of the set. So, h divides and what is order of a? Order of a is p power e because a belongs to remember a belongs to capital S which is the set of all subsets of p power e. So, order of h divides order of p power e sorry order of h divides p power e. So, order of h is a power of p right. If you have a number dividing p power e p is a prime number. So, it must be a power of p. So, only numbers that divide p power e are powers of p. So, this is because p is prime. Of course, this is not true if p is not a prime. So, if some number divides p power e it must be a power of p by itself. We also have the counting formula. What is the counting formula? It says that um, order of g remember g acts on s use counting formula for the g action on s and the element a in s. I recall earlier in the previous video the counting formula it says the order of the group is product of order of the stabilizer of A and the orbit of A. And what is the order of group? It is p power e times m. Order of the stabilizer which I call h is some power of let us say p power i. Let us say p power i is the order of h. So, remember I concluded that order of h is a power of p. So, it is some p power i and whatever is the orbit of uh, order of the orbit. So, and it is some number. So, let us call it may be um, m not m. So, let us call it r. So, p power e times m is equal to p power i times r, but remember the assumption on orbit of a orbit of a is such that p does not divide the size of orbit of A. So, by choice of A, P does not divide the order of orbit of A. So, in other words P does not divide R. So, now let us look at this carefully. So, we have P, P E M is equal to P I R and what do we know? P does not divide R. So, remember integers can be factored uniquely. So, you have a p appears e times on the left hand side. So, p appears e times on the left right. So, it must appear e times on the right also. It appears i times here and it does not appear in r. When I write uh, appear what I mean is when you factor r into product of primes p is not one of them. So, this implies these two facts imply that i equal to e right. So, because the p must appear e times on the right hand side also and r cannot have any p's in it. So, i must be equal to e. So, the order of the stabilizer is p power e. So, we are done with the proof the first silo theorem. Recall the first silo theorem says if you have a group G 
finite group G and a prime number P divides it, P must G must have a silo P subgroup and we have produced it because we have produced it because H is a silo P subgroup G. Okay. So, this completes the proof. The, the proof is very clever and you would not normally think of proving it like this. So, what happened is we looked at the set of all subsets of G containing P power E elements. Of course, some of them will be subgroups, but we did not directly prove that one of them is a subgroup. What we showed is that stabilizer of one of them will have order P power E, that is what we have shown. So, there is an orbit whose order is not divisible by P and stabilizer of that orbit, that element must have order P power E. So, this proves the first silo theorem and an important corollary of this is the following. So, let G be a finite group. and let p be a prime number that divides order of g. Then g has an element of order p. So, that is my statement. This is exactly the, the generalization of Cauchy's theorem that I promised when I talked about Cauchy's theorem. Here I am removing an important word here. I am not assuming that G is an abelian group. We have already proved that if G is a finite abelian group and a prime divides the order of that group, then the group has an order L, order P element. Now I am not assuming that the group is abelian anymore. Any finite group has this property. Why is this? By silo, first silo theorem, G has a silo P subgroup, right? Say H. So, G has a silo P subgroup, say H. So, in other words, order of H is equal to P power E, uh, and we write N as P power E M. Always P does not divide M, N is the order of G. So, now let us choose any element of H. What can be the order of A? By Lagrange's theorem, the order of the element divides P power E, right? Order of the element divides order of H, which is because A is in H, Lagrange's theorem. Lagrange's theorem implies order of A divides order of H, which is P power E. So, this in particular means order of A is equal to P power R for some, I am going to assume that A is not identity. Okay. So, R is between 1 and E. So, it can be 0, because if R is 0, P power 0 is 1, order of A is 1 means A is E. So, A is P power R, order of A is P power R. Now, how do I construct a order p element? So, now consider b is equal to a power p power r minus 1. So, I am taking b to be a power p power r minus 1, which is of course, an element of a, which is an element of, which is a subset of g, subgroup of g. So, I claim that then we sh we claim order of b is p this is easy because what is b power p b power p is a power p power r minus 1 power p and this obviously imply this is equal to a power p power r because order of a is p power r this is e so b power e is e right so now that does not immediately prove that order of B is P, because B power E is E means. So, order of P B divides P. Right? This is something that we have learned way back in the beginning videos. If an element has 
uh, a certain power of an element is identity, then order of that element must divide that power. But order uh, only numbers that divide p, p being a prime number are 1 and p. So, order of b is 1 or order of b is p. If order of b is p, we are done. Can order of b is 1? Can order of b be 1? Order of b 1 means what? Only element of order 1 in any group is the identity element. That means, b must be equal to e. That means, a power p power r minus 1 equal to e. That means, order of a divides p power r minus 1, but order of a is p power r that is by assumption right a was an element of order p power r. Hence, p power r divides p power r minus 1 this is absurd. Obviously, p power r cannot divide p power r minus 1. So, order of b is p power p and b is the element we are looking for. So, this proves the corollary. So, uh, as I said this corollary generalizes the Cauchy's theorem and says that for any finite group no, no longer need it, we are assuming it to be abelian. If a prime number p divides the order of the group then that group has an element of order p. And this is an Im immediate corollary of the first Silo theorem. So, Silo theorem is way more than just saying uh, that corollary. So, it, it is saying something stronger because it, is, because it says that G has a subgroup of order p power e. So, this hopefully gives you an idea of the power of Cauchy's theorem and the next two Cauchy's theorems say further about this. So, first uh, sorry uh, this says something about the power of Silo theorem and the next two Silo theorems say further things about Silo p subgroups. We know now that there is always at least one Silo p subgroup. So, in the next two uh, Silo theorems, we will study more properties of Silo p subgroups. Thank you. I will stop the video here.